podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. When I look for saplings, I look for something that's flexible and has good color. This is sweet gum. I need different kinds of saplings. I need little saplings that I can use to kind of bind things together. We can, we'll probably be able to use them. The maples like this okay. one are, are favored. Okay. Uh, the poplars are just too brittle. I need some really larger ones that I can use as structural pieces. And then I need lots of medium-sized ones. We're gonna cut these gums and then by spring, they'll start back up again. So we're not really rooting them out. We're more like doing a massive pruning. If we don't go ahead and gather a certain amount, then there's this kind of false sense of security, like, oh, we must have enough. Well, we need about a tractor trailer load of sticks. It's kind of the golden opportunity. It's nice to come out here and work with a contemporary artist and get a little bit of a closer look at their process. It's inspiring. It's like, oh, it makes me want to go out and be creative. I think that's what's really interesting about what he does. No two that he does are the same. Well, I'm trying to forget my last one that I just finished four days ago in Palo Alto. <laughs> I was astounded. I said, how can you do this? It's like art on demand. Adds to the drama and also to the pressure that I have to come up with something great. And as at this moment, I'm not really clear what that is. We know the area on campus where it's going to go. As far as the shape or configuration, we don't know. Everybody looked askance as we kept running over the lawn with the truck and dumped the sticks on the ground. And they thought, well, the school's up to something, up to no good. You know, that's the art department, isn't it? You know how they are. But our job is to transform a backyard material into something that has credibility. After an early career in hospital administration, I decided that I really wanted to be a sculptor. So I ended up down at the University of North Carolina. I started hauling sticks down to the art lab. At one moment, I made this kind of body wrap out of really small sticks, and I took it down to a student show. That kind of set me on a new mark of thinking, well, maybe I could use sticks to build things. Because this is the very center of campus, I thought about building some kind of core. Our middle needs to be back, maybe right in here, something. But yesterday, someone found a little yellow jacket hive. It's gonna be the number of circles that makes it. So we just wanna pin that line and had all these little individual cells. This is the outer edge right here at two and a half feet that you can find a center and draw a circle. And so that gave rise to trying to build something. Our core is these little individual cells that are acting as kind of a big unit. As it's a little tower-like affair, then they'll all conglomerate as this kind of central core thing. All right. At the beginning, there's always this uh, drama of building, and the first bit of it is that you don't know what you're doing. I'm, I'll get a, a feel for this in a minute. This has just got to go in one of the holes and your sponsors are a little edgy, wondering if they've made a terrible error. Yeah, maybe it could go in there, we'll see. But I'm used to working much more intuitively. Is that the way you want to put it? I make a little drawing, but after we get started, just throw the drawing away. So let's straighten this up a little bit. Because what I really want is this interplay between what you see and what it makes you feel and how to react to that. You can see it takes a bunch of sticks to do this. Generally, all my work is built within a three week time period. I have to plan my life and I wanna do a one sculpture right after another. So I need a definite starting point and a definite finishing point. I'm at a new place each month and then I take one weekend off and one week a month.
It's really great to have volunteers help you. you. Better watch your feet. At first, they might be a little uncertain, but my theory is they need permission. What do you like? You like those yeah. little ones you've been working with? Yeah, those are nice. Thank you. I have this kind of concept that children have the kind of shadow life of our hunting and gathering past. When they pick up a stick, there's just some kind of information there that they connect with. They're a weapon, they're a tool, they're a piece of a wall. It's an imaginative object. I've taken all these kind of traditional ways of dealing with sticks and tried to turn them to my own artistic end. I think working something into a site is one of my stronger points. Sites that would be really provocative, sites that would provide an element of surprise. And thought, well, you know, this is an underutilized site. Nobody ever thought of putting a sculpture, but if you did, how to tag into some subliminal peripheral information that's in the site and tie the sculpture to that. The idea of building something that really captures people's imagination is where I'm going. As things get set up in the work and you know what the parameters are, you're working towards it. People learn to do the work. You have a good crew that develops as a kind of a fighting force. This angle is pretty, this one is just being really stubborn. All right, I got it. At that point, everyone just relaxes and there's a kind of quality that is imparted to the sculpture because of that. Some of its best parts are being developed during that moment when everyone comes together as a real crew. Everybody's doing different things, like one person's doing these circles up here. And some people are doing the archways. And it seems a lot like drawing, like if you have all the lines going in one way, it's not as interesting if you have them kind of overlapping and crisscrossing. There's going to be a doorway that people can walk through and you'll see the little windows also. Every single time one stick crosses another, that's a decision that somebody's made. Somehow all those decisions come together in, in, a, in the grand scheme. In general, people think of the dark in some ways as ways to slip into a kind of anonymity so that you don't really feel like people can get you or that you're vulnerable at all. Some people have a different set of associations with going outdoors or maybe walking in the woods. If you're afraid of the dark or when you dream, you dream of forests that are larger than life that might swallow you up, you might feel a certain amount of threat when you look at my work. There's always the point that you feel like, oh my, will we ever finish? But we're making some pretty good progress. And today we happen to be up here on the top doing our tower tops. So like this one is gonna be about this tall, I guess. I'm glad you were around there for that one. I was afraid to get out there. We had all this limbing coming up from these things that were started way down on the ground those would not bend evenly. So we've gone back in with this red maple and we've put these ribs in there that will bend over equally all the way around. So that gives us this nice round shape. Ella's working on this one, she's getting it. You can feel how strong it is now. Might be stuck in here a while. Oh, 
Well, I would say the mythical quality in these objects that I build really has to do one with sticks are connected to momentum. They're connected to the deep woods. They're connected to all kinds of little things that have captured our imagination. These configurations give a sense of momentum. So when you look at these objects, you imagine that you're seeing something that's not really man-made, that it might have been found somewhere, it might have been a natural occurrence. It resonates with the forces of nature like wind and water, the kind of sense of flowing motion that we have in our mind that belong to the natural world. When we were almost finished, we were trying to put our last finishing touches on it. The students stopped, the faculty stopped, people just flooded around it. And finally we just said, that's it, we, that must be good enough. I love it, I think it might be one of my best sculptures. I always like the one that I've just finished, partly it's that we've had the amount of labor and drudge on it to actually get it finished. And I think that the general person that comes onto the Guilford campus is really going to be excited by it. The people that come and see them, they often are longing from the very first to have them last forever. My sculptures last about two years. You get one great year, one pretty good year. And the people say, well, can't you treat this work in some way? Can't you make it last? And so I think that adds a certain quality to the sculpture itself and that it can't last, and so you have to enjoy it like you might a dance or a nice garden. You have to enjoy it during its lifetime, and that kind of finality that you are anticipating, I think, adds to the quickness and the desirability, ultimately, of the work. Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV.